Hey, what's going on, guys? First of all, I want to thank you guys about all the support and all the recent um, views and likes and comments and all the all the videos I've been posting recently. It's awesome to have all you guys watching. I'd like to say, like, please like, comment, and subscribe, and this one. Let's see what we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to talk about something really different than Splinterlands, and something that is you should you should all realistically play this game. It's called Splinter Forge. I'll do a pretty basic guide on Splinter Forge because there's not much to do on this game. There's not many things to know. There is certain strategies, but that's something that's more advanced. So I want to talk about some of the basic stuff. So why should everyone that plays Splinterlands play Splinter Forge? The first thing is every asset in Splinterlands is also in Splinter Forge. Well, by asset I mean pretty much cards. So Splinter Forge is a game where there's different bosses for different leagues. So bronze, silver, gold, diamond. And we could do battles on these throughout everyone that's playing the game. These are the health meters. As soon as it dies, there is a leaderboard that pays out a certain amount of Forge. Forge is a token for Splinter Forge. With Forge, you can do some other buying things. But first, let's go with why we should play this game. And why everyone that plays Splinter should play. Well, the first thing is, when you battle these, you are using Splinterlands cards. So if you do own Splinter's cards, you could fight these bosses. The requisites for different bosses, like this one says max monsters is 3, 3, 2, 1. So pretty much the same as Bronze League in Splinterlands. And hero level, 10, 10, 10, 10. It's, you could have a 10 hero level for everything. Heroes are the thing that it makes this game um, different in Splinterlands. Those are the same assets, but it's different. So a hero could be like this ranger here. There is wizard, which... It's not showing the actual background. This game, or this warrior actually. So the warrior would be a melee attack. I don't have anything equipped with him. Wizard would be the same thing, but magic attack. And then we are using ranger because that is the one we have the most stuff for. And thanks to um some gifts, we have some upgrades on it. But also, I have bought some stuff in the game. Just FYI. But the basic idea is you could build up a team from these cards and battle and try to reach leaderboards. The idea is that if you can reach leaderboards, you will be get you will get paid out in Forge. That's the basics. And if you do get paid out in Forge, what can you do with Forge? Well, that's the real question. Well, with Forge, you could either go to this this uh, pack shop, which you get uh, alpha crates and enhancement bags. And the difference in both of these is that alpha crates pretty much is just gear you could equip onto your hero. And enhancement bags are little runes or gems that you could use to upgrade and put into your equipment. So you need both of these technically to play the game. And then there's a couple other things you could buy here. Stam uh, add 5 stamina, add um, minor stamina potion, so you can add 50 stamina, 100 stamina, and 150 stamina. So how battles work is we have stamina up here. The stamina pretty much means that for every battle we do, the amount of... Um, stamina we use in a battle is what we waste but we also get um rewarded so i'll play a game now i do have a team that i am using for this boss these bosses have different different one base skill here which is retaliate so I don't really want to play melee and then it has a random ability which is magic reflect every boss has a basic um ability in the beginning and as they get tougher they're harder they get more and then it has a random ability that just pops up anytime you battle it. It's a, random, a different random ability. It also has a lot of um, different damage points. It does attack. It does have three attacks, a lot of damage. So a team I'm running right now is this. Is this going to be a really quick um, setup because oh, that's not the run I'm running right now. Um, yeah, it also strategy-wise. You need to figure out what is the best strategy and what is the best um, for you to use. You could also look at recent battles that people have played, and that will help you um, understand what is a good idea, what is a good strategy. You could replicate their strategy, but honestly, you could realistically make your own strategy. It's probably better to start off by copying someone's strategy. Uh, what am I missing here? What am I missing here? I have a strategy, but I don't have it laid out yet. I just started using the strategy today, so... I'm not 100% sure on it. Let me pull up my notes. I do have a note on the game because I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to play and what's good strategies. I don't think this is one of the best strategies for this boss, but it is pretty decent. 
I am in leaderboard still somehow, so <laughs> I'm hoping I can stay in leaderboard so I can get some forgeums so I can buy some more packs. I am missing something. Okay, so I have Kraken, I have Sethropod, I have the seven mana new card, I have three, I have Demon Shark, I have I don't have Scabble. That's what I'm missing, I'm missing a Scabble. Okay, there. So pretty much here, I set up my team. Here's a team I'm using. You can use seven monsters more than Splinter Lands, but you have to meet the requirements of 45 mana. This can be upgraded with some rules. We'll talk about the hero after. But um yeah, seven monsters can be used. You can use less or more depending. Some people actually use way less and could do a good amount of damage. So it all depends on the strategy. But this is the basic strategy I'm using for this one. And then when we'll battle, we'll battle this one. So we're gonna use 45 um Stamina on this because we're using 45. In a sense, it's kind of like mana. Same thing as mana and lands, but we're using 45 of it so that we will waste our 45 stamina. And this is a magic reflect game, so we'll see how we do. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys exactly how the battles work after this loads. Okay. So that's pretty much how the battles work is it's kind of like Splinter Lands, but it's only one boss instead of playing against another player, which you're like battling their cards. So here I'll just start the battle. It has some little animations, and here we go. This is my hero, and this is the mighty chicken. So we'll speed this up a bit, but the basic understanding is I am going to get two speed from Conqueror. I'm going to get two one speed from Kelia. I'm going to add shield to everything. I'm going to add piercing and scatter shot. These don't matter because there's no shield, so piercing doesn't matter. And scatter shot also doesn't matter because only one boss. So basics, I'm getting speed. Speed is something people say is really good to have in this game. I also did increase damage to all of these with with um, Inspire, and then I also have double shield repair and double heal and slowness. The idea here is that I want to um, do as much damage as possible to him with taking as little damage as possible. So the, the strategy here is get um, everything to hit Kraken and shield repair him and also heal him and try to, serve, to have our Kraken serve as long as possible, but we do as much damage as possible. And on here, on the left side, we can see the actions that are going on. So in the start of the battle, we see what we're adding to our heroes or to our team. And then we see the damage done to the duck. And then we also see our chicken, I mean. And we see the chicken's damage done to us. And then we see shield repair. A couple things are kind of visual, like not there yet. Like Kraken is probably less health than this. But sometimes the, the visuals don't um, align. This game is very new, so there's still a lot of little bugs. There's no marketplace yet either, so that's what I'm saying. This game is right now is at the basic stages where we could understand a lot of the stuff and start learning. But we could also skip battle here, or we could in we could increase the speed of the battle. We can increase it really fast, and we can see the t the um what's going on in battle here, and also the attacks going to the chicken. Yeah, we'll skip this one because it might take a little long because we do have a lot of sustainability in this team. So let's skip battle and see how much we do. So here we have done 230 damage, which is not crazy. It's not a crazy amount of damage. And we do gain 12 Electrum and we do get 11.66 Forge. Let's look at what we or what our Electrum is also. So I haven't looked at that yet. And these are the, our rewards we get. Electrum it, or um, Forge is equivalent to the price of DC at the moment. I think that's how they want it to be also. So think about if any Forgeum you do gain is considered pretty much DC in the sense right but that puts us in here one battle we're at 89 spot which is good we could probably survive and get this 5000 forge but yeah electrium is used okay well first let's not talk about electrium because it is more complicated than that but here is like a history of how much forge i have gotten in a couple battles here and there you guys can see i've made some what was that oh uh, transfer tokens yesterday that's when i decided to buy some um new some gear but yeah inventory here is our inventory so there's the packs we get the handsome bags the potions all that we have stamina here expansions then we have electrium electrium is is um earned by battling that's the only way you earn that and the same as forge you earn forge by battles or by placing leaderboards then we can look at airdrops these are airdrop cards that um come after you open packs. I don't have anything, I haven't gotten this, I don't have any because I did not open enough crates for it, fortunately. 
But that's the basic thing in inventory if you want to ask questions, and that's how you can log out as well. That's the basics when you click your, your name here. But let's go to hero because that's something we haven't talked about yet. How do heroes work? So, like I said, we open up, We actually, let's look at cards first. We open up packs, and what do we get from packs? We get these things, all these abilities, equipped sockets, uh, foil. Okay, so pretty much here, it's pretty much the inventory. So there's certain gear, like these are gear here. This shield, this bow, this um quiver thing to hold the arrows, I guess. These things are all equipment. These can be put into heroes. There's certain equipment that is only specific to some heroes, and there's other equipment that is is for all heroes, pretty much. There's also runes. These are the runes here. These runes are things you could put into these um these items that you put on your hero. So the basic idea is you could uh add you could imb in imbue and bow whatever it's called, right? And you could add these to these items. So this is pretty much saying if I add this one, you may play two water monsters without water summoner. So if I play, for example, uh, the team I'm playing now is fire and water, right? Well, that doesn't make sense, but with fire and water. But for example, if I play fire and water, then this one here says I could play a death. I could play de one death uh, monster without having to worry about um, having a death summoner on the board. So you could mix and match your um, your monsters to battle with some of these runes. There's other runes that do other things that add more damage, more health, stuff like that. So for example, these runes then like you could tell kind of tell which one is gear, which one is runes. The runes are like these like letter looking things, like this like I guess V shape, this N shape, and these are other things. So pretty much that's what these are. But these do add stats, like this one adds 4 um, shield, this one adds 3 damage. So obviously we're going to put those on. I already put these on and I already put this on uh, one of these. Yeah, one, I put it on this one. And also the gear does have other sort of sh plus shield plus um, health. And for bronze, you can get up to 10 stats in all like we looked at. At the higher leagues, you do get um, more health, more shield, more damage. But yeah, the basic idea is that you could add these on there, and some of these, like these, like the water one, the add death, the add fire, the add three extra mana, these are very good ones to use because they will increase the, the cards you could use in the, in the playing field. Which is something people like to do, and you could even see in the recent battles, some people are playing cards and doing a lot of damage because they're mixed matching, like for example, fire water, or mixed matching cards that are not even used with their summoner. Well, that's the basics about gear. The hero thing here, we would equip, there's different gear for different heroes. So, we don't have back, I don't think we have necklace, and I don't think we have head uh, yet. So, we don't have that kind of gear yet, but we do have everything else under under this branch. So, we have body, legs, rings, offhand, weapons, feet, and hands. I don't, still don't have a feet, and I don't have a ring yet, but it's okay. I'll get it eventually, hopefully. <laughs> But the basic idea here is equip this stuff, add runes to it, and then you could um you could get better and better and get have better stats. For example, my hands here are plus one, but also this rune. Well, I don't think I could even check it, but the rune pretty much adds more um, shield, I believe. This one added more archers, archery damage. So I do get plus one here, then plus I think three or four. From that rune so it is good to add runes then there's the offhand one which also is a really really good um equipment any anything you have is really good so let's add speed is all these things add stuff this adds health this adds shield so shield plus shield plus weapon up uh, plus more damage is our whole stats here so we're actually kind of close to maxing out our armor for bronze league which is cool but I did forget to mention what um, the other coin we are getting. It's electri electronium, whatever. <laughs> but the the idea of that token uh, is that once we want to like this guy, this uh, item here is a common. It has no slot on it, so we add a socket. That's how we add a slot to it. To add a socket, we have to have played the game. That's the only way you get electronium. And right now it's a zero point three three percent chance if we use one. As we increase this, we get a higher chance. So, like for an item like this, I believe it's like 250, or is it more? 
No, two, it's definitely 300. Yeah, so for an item like this, we need to use 300 uh, of this electronium to therefore be able to add a socket. And that is to be able to add one of our runes or one of these pretty much here. To add one of these, we need to add to the socket and we need to waste some of our electronium. You do get electronium right now only from battling bosses. Right now, I don't have enough enough stamina to battle again, but these scatters now scatter shot before it was reflex shield, if you guys remember. But you guys can see here the hero stats are what what really um, matters right now, in my opinion. If you want to get a max hero, then you want to have cards because you can rent the you can rent you could also rent cards from peak monsters and use them in battle. So I did rent like I did rent the cards I did use. Okay, now we're back to ninety one. But it's okay. As so as long as we're top hundred, we'll we'll be chilling. <laughs> but we can look at recent battles, right? So here is where you can find good strategies to actually play the game. Like this guy has got a hundred. That's probably not a good. Probably not the best strategy to use. He's trying to use magic. He's he did probably run some of these cards. It's still hundred damage is okay. It's nothing crazy, but we want to try to get as much damage possible by playing one a team. So this guy here is using water and and uh, life so he's using okay that's not a bad team it's not a bad setup he also has this upgrade you could tell because it's 5a57 he's not a bad setup and he did get 475 so that's not bad if if this this team is actually better than the one i just played but it depends also depends on the game mode because the boss does change its random ability so that could have been a lucky one or one of the games that you do when at, but one of these higher ones, like these 800 and also 783, are probably more crazy setups. Yeah, here we go. Kitty and Conqueror. He has here, he has two water cards, which means you need the water ruin. So you can play these because you don't have water summoners. You do have a dragon card here, neutral, neutral, life, life. So you do also need the life ruin on top of that to play this team that's why you can't really always copy people's teams especially when you first start you don't have all of these like i still can't i still don't have the life ruins so i wouldn't be able to play this this team and copy his um strategy but this strategy seems to be working for him because he's making 800 and even then we could check with his score pvt john that's his name look at leaderboards pvt john where is pvt john and the leaderboards right now PVT John right now is on 20 spot. So 20 spot, he's, he's at 18 damage. He's played 43 battles, which I've played 41 and I am 91. I don't have his team though, but he is right now, as of right now, he is winning 15,000 Forge, which could be used to even upgrade his stuff even more. Like these crates here, I forgot to mention. Uh, to buy those crates, they do cost 3,000 Forge. And this is for the Alpha Gear. Which you need the alpha gear, and you also do need the handsome bags, but this one costs a little more with forty thousand forge. And this how many have been sold? Fifty eight thousand and eleven thousand have been sold here. There's also an airdrop for both of these. An airdrop means that right here, for the fir for the first airdrop will happen after two hundred k packs have sold. Players are guaranteed one airdrop per car for every two hundred fifty packs purchased. You are guaranteed no iron. No elite iron helm based on your three packs purchased. So I'm not guaranteed this item at all yet, but eventually if I do end up getting more packs, like 250 packs, I will be guaranteed this item. It's the same thing as Splurland's airdrops in a way, but you're getting these items. Like this one as well is airdrop socket equipment. After 200k, 200K we get one airdrop. I have three packs bought here. It, show, it doesn't show what the stats are actually for this one. But does it show the stats for this? The show the plus three and then the show a socket, empty socket for helmet. So yeah, that's how you can buy. You can also buy the, the alpha crates with DC, which is awesome. Another thing I didn't mention, which is important, really important actually, is the reforge ability. So here we go. This is the re this is where you could open your packs on the forge. You open your packs here. I don't have any at the moment, but this is where you open. I did open these packs the other day. So I opened one 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 three. Is what I open, but the basic thing here is you could you could take your common cards and reforge them. So what it pretty much is saying here is you get four common cards and you could turn that into a, a rare for 150 forge. So you pay 150 forge, you you pretty much burn 
the four commons. Well, I don't know if it's burn, but you pretty much get rid of four commons to upgrade your gear to rare. So then you get rare. And then on top of that, you can do the same thing with you can do the same thing with um the um the ruins and yeah. You can do the same thing with the ruins. It's pretty much the same exact thing. You could take four and make it rares. You could also take rares and make them to epics. You could also take epics and change them to legendaries. I don't have any legendaries right now, but yeah. Another thing, really quickly, that I did not mention is the thing you could upgrade these gears, actually. So I do have this epic. I do have these two epic cards, right? Epic cards here, we could look at the stats. So it's similar to Splinterlands. If you have one card, you, you get plus two armor. If you have 16 cards, you upgrade to level two and you can get four armor. Then onwards and onwards, you get up to seven armor per this item. As they get better, they are they will give you better stats. So either if it's an epic, it will give you better stats. There's also gold foil versions of all of these items. Gold foils pretty much give you more rewards for battle. I don't have any gold foil, so I'm not 100% on that, but I'm pretty sure to give you more per battle. But yeah, this is pretty much like, oh, for rares, you need more to upgrade to more levels. You know, this is similar to the Splinterlands. Commons are very common, and you gotta, you, you definitely could get a lot more commons. Like this is 120 commons to max it out. The same thing looks like the rares are to max out 72 of these. But like I said, you could always take, like, burn all your rares or get rid of your rares to just get epics. Or not epics, to get rares. You could burn your rares to get epics. So it's like you could always increase and increase and increase. Also, the other good thing about the sockets, or not the sockets, but like the runes you could add on, is that the runes are kind of different because the runes that you don't have to technically like combine these at all. But the thing is, you have to level these up. So as you're leveling them up, they change. Oh, not leveling up, but you do have to burn these and therefore level them up. That makes sense. Get rid of four, then get a rare. Get rid of four rares to get an epic. Get rid of the epic scale legendary but these also do upgrade in the amount that could be used so this is a rare here already right this adds two as two water monsters without water summoner if i upgrade this to the legendary status it would be able to have five so i'd be able to use a five and i have a seven man team so i would have i would have to use two other cards that are not water the basic idea all of these runes just pretty much have to get burned to get rare, and burned to get epics and burned to get legendaries. The gear is more complicated because you do have to get multiples and upgrade. But no matter what, I think you guys should play this game. And that's the basic idea of Splinterforge. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.